Let's try to look at the intuition uh, of this a little bit more. We can again think of the capacitor like a dam. It's like we're loading up water behind the dam. Well, when we started, there was no water behind the dam. When we started, there was no water behind the dam. So when you're originally piling up the water, is it originally easy or hard to pile up the water? It should be easy because there, there's, nothing, there's no water there yet. That's why originally, when we closed the switch, there was a very strong current. Originally, it was very easy for the battery to send lots of water, so to speak, towards the capacitor. But over time, more and more water got piled up beside there. Remember, this also stands for Q, which is the charges or the water in our analogy. More and more water got piled up. Well, roughly speaking, the more positive charges we put here, the harder it is to put more positive charges. Remember, these positive charges don't like being crowded together here on this positive plate. And you can see it got harder and harder for the battery to send current. It got harder and harder for the battery to send current because it was trying to stuff more and more positive charges here until eventually it's impossible for the battery to send current. And asymptotically, the current goes to zero. Eventually, there's so many positive charges on this plate that they prevent the battery from sending any more current through. This is different than what we saw in our early ordinary circuits. When we just did circuits with resistors, when we were just doing circuits with resistors, there was no change over time. When we were just doing circuits with resistors, there was a single set current that lasted forever until the battery ran out of energy. We didn't have to worry about time. Time only starts coming into the picture when we have capacitors because capacitors take time to charge up. They take time to charge up. With it. If there was no capacitors, we wouldn't have to worry about the element of time. There would just be a single current that lasts forever until the battery runs out. I think this is a really useful analogy again. Originally, there was no positive charges here, so it was easy for the battery to send a strong current. But the more positive charges we get here, the harder it is until eventually it's pretty much impossible. So you can see when, when is the current close to zero? when the charge on the capacitor is close to its maximum. It's this that's causing the current to go to zero. So these two things are tied together. The very fact that we have so many positive charges piled up on the capacitor is what's prevented the battery from sending any more current. Originally, when the battery is sending a high current, there's a big voltage drop on the resistor because I is proportional to V. But then eventually there's no current. But when there's no current, there's no voltage drop across the resistor, and that goes to zero. Where did the voltage drop go? It went to the capacitor. These two things have to add up to five. These two things have to add up to five, so when this is low, this is high. Or when the voltage on the capacitor is high, the voltage on the resistor is low. What we just went through here are the graphs for a charging capacitor. This is what we could call a charging capacitor. And we figured all this out based on the idea that the voltage and the charge can't jump. And we saw that since the voltage and the charge can't jump, the current has to jump. Now there's an equation for all of this. This is an exponential curve. Now, uh, some classes cover this a lot and some don't. Is this, was this an equation that seemed important in your class? Yes? OK. Here's the equation. By the way, a lot of the time in the course, instead of using V, you might use a capital epsilon for voltage. So you might see this with V or with a capital epsilon. By the way, the equation for the charge here would look very similar. the same exact equation, except we use Q and Q max instead of V and V max. This is the equation we always use for an asymptotic increase. For asymptotic increase, we're going to use an equation that looks like this. But how about for an asymptotic decrease that's happening with the current here? Here's the equation for asymptotic decrease. What would be the equation then for the voltage across the resistor? Um, v is equal to max. Um, e to the negative t over s. Good. This shows how important it is to say whose voltage you're focusing on. But because the equation for the resistor's voltage 
is entirely different from the equation for the capacitor's voltage. The capacitor has an asymptotic increase equation, and the resistor has an asymptotic decrease. We're going to see a lot of these asymptotic increases and decreases. Well, this is the equation for asymptotic increase, and this is the equation for asymptotic decrease. You should have those clearly labeled in your notes so that you know which is which. What would Vmax be in this problem? Um, five. Right. I didn't give you enough information to figure out Qmax or Imax, but here we know that Vmax would have been five. This is what's called an RC circuit for the very simple reason that it's got a resistor and a capacitor. So we've seen how to interpret a charging RC circuit. An RC circuit with a charging capacitor. Now, let's say that we've got this capacitor fully charged. Once it's fully charged, what's its voltage going to be? Be because once it's fully charged, it's getting all the voltage and the resistor has none of the voltage. We had a picture of that up here in a second. Now let's suppose that we remove the battery. So now the circuit looks like this. We've removed the battery. And that's it, we've opened the circuit. So before time zero, this is open. What's the voltage across the capacitor? Now let's see what happens when we close the circuit again. So between these two pictures, we remove the battery and open the circuit to freeze things in place. As long as the circuit is open, there's no change, right? As long as the circuit is open, nothing can happen. But what happens when we close this? Well, now a current can flow. Which way is the current going to flow now? Because what do these positive charges want to do? They want to get away from here. We've been complaining all this time about how unhappy the positive charges are to be all crowded like this. They want to move in this direction. They couldn't do that before. What they want to do is move over here and reunite with their negative brethren over here. They want to get around to get to these negatives. Now, they couldn't do that before when the switch was open. So they were just sitting pretty. But once we close the switch, then they're going to loop around to get over here. And that gives us a current. Does that also not happen when there's a battery because the top half of the battery is a positive charge? Well, yeah, that's right. So all this time, the battery has been preventing the positive charges from going in the opposite direction. In fact, to think about the whole idea, the pos so the battery is trying to force the positive charges clockwise. But the positive charges over here want to move counterclockwise. Well, originally, there was a 5-volt battery, and there were no positive charges here. So the battery was clearly superior and was pushing the positive charges clockwise. But as more and more positive charges accumulated over here, it became more and more of an equal battle until eventually the, battery, the, the, the force of the battery pushing clockwise was exactly counterbalanced by the force of the positive charges when you move counterclockwise. That was the reason why we saw, I shouldn't have erased this, that was the reason why we saw that eventually the current went to zero. That's why the current went to zero, because eventually the clockwise impetus electromotive force from the battery was counteracted by the desire of these positive charges over here to go counterclockwise. But now that we've removed the battery, there's no longer this struggle between two things. Now there's nothing to prevent the positive charges from moving counterclockwise. As long as the switch was open, they still couldn't do that. But once we close the switch, now they can do what they want to do is move counterclockwise, and the battery's not around to prevent that. So what you said before was exactly right. It was the battery that was preventing them from moving counterclockwise. In fact, for a long time, not only was the battery not letting them move counterclockwise, it was moving more charges clockwise until eventually it couldn't do any more. That's why the current went to zero here. But now the current is going to move in counterclockwise. 
Remember that when the switch was open, there was no current. But now the current is going to jump, isn't it? The current is going to jump as the current starts flowing through. However, eventually the current has to end because eventually all the positive charges will be gone from here. Eventually all the positive charges will have gotten away from the positive plate and reunited with the negative plate and then there won't be any reason anymore for current to flow. So now the current will again start high and asymptotically reach towards zero. Is that for the capacitor? Well, this is the graph for current. And remember that in series, everybody has the same current. Oh, right. So that's why I didn't have to say whether this was the capacitor's current or the resistor's current. That was a good instinct. We should always ask which device each graph is for. But for current, for things in series, we can use the same graph for everybody. 